this is one I really can't let go. And, and it's just another studyfinds.org report, land of the worried, 83% of Americans very stressed over nation's future. The title of today's show is The Good News. And while this is a reference to a number of specific stories, it's also a reference to Christianity, the good news, the gospel. Have you heard the good news? And when I see a story like this, a new survey shows seven in 10 Americans agree 2020 is the lowest point in the country's history that they've witnessed. Two thirds say that the government's response to the coronavirus is a source of daily stress from them for them. 83% of Americans very stressed over nation's future. And I think about why why do I not get worried? You know, why because I, I I mean I am stressed. Oh, actually, why do I not get stressed? Right? I'm worried like in an intellectual sense. I go, yeah, this is this is a worrying time. Things are weird. Everything's a little blurry in America right now. Everything's delayed, slow. People are suffering. People are on edge. A lot of negative emotions like this. Way more present than at our pre-coronaphobia crisis baseline. So why? Why do I not turn that concern into worry or stress? What's the difference for me? And it almost comes down to a matter of religion. There are a lot of good things that come out of religion. People at peace who are happier, who are more in touch with their communities, who live better lives overall for whatever reason. Oftentimes because of religion, something that those of us who don't have such a concrete, specific spiritual grounding might say is, uh, you know, it's a mythology, you know, but a, a perhaps a, a useful uh, and, and helpful one. And you know, what is it that actually gives people that? I mean, there are a lot of, so you, we don't, you don't need to believe in the mythology of Jesus for Christianity to make you a better person in, in a Christian community. It's true about, you know, every religion, right? You don't, and I, it's funny, I meet Catholics all the time. We're like, believe this stuff? No. Oh, but I'm a devout Catholic, right? Because they're, they practice, they like the community. They, they, they believe in the ethos, the, the worldview. And this is where freedom really is a kind of religion in that it gives me a worldview that I can have confidence in. It gives me a community to be a part of. It gives me a set of values, but even more so than that. In the same way that a lot of people from religion get confidence in the afterlife or the future or the will of God being done among men every day. That it is, it is God's will. God's will be done. Right. For me, a big part of my religion, the good news, if you will, is that things are getting better. They're getting better all the time. Don't believe the hype. The fundamentals of the great global human family are strong. We are connected like never before. We are accelerating into a new era of human existence. Some people who are spiritual but not religious call it the ascension. To me, it's just the natural course of human evolution and progress. Maybe two steps forward, one step backwards. But humanity marches on. And that's the good news. Now, I wanted to get this, this little segment was inspired not just by that story from uh, studyfinds.org, but from a new website that we're using as a news aggregator here. And I, it's uh, goodnewsnetwork.org. I put it on Twitter last week. Hey, I'm looking to improve my uh, editorial process. You know, my two primary sources are still Drudge Report and Freedoms Phoenix. Uh, but, you know, and, and of course, I'm always on Twitter and, and uh, I generally avoid my, my Facebook stream uh but you know i'm on facebook uh we've got some weird uh tech stories that we've been covering from ycombinator.com 
but someone shared with me uh, goodnewsnetwork.org. And I'm really excited about this. I kind of, and, and this week I've been trying to get to it. And I haven't gotten to it. Where's this is, this is like, ah, even me, even me. I put off the good news. So we cover the bad news. Right. And, uh, you know, there's a natural tendency towards that. So it's, it's, I'm really glad that I have this website in my editorial toolkit to bring more positivity to the show. And they have a this day in history feature. This is what I've been trying to get to. Um, so uh, there's there's um, more good news on this day in history. Blaise Pascal, the French mathematician philosopher who was a young man, invented a mechanical calculator and later philosophized that all men's miseries derived from not being able to sit in a quiet room alone. Rather prescient right now, isn't it? Was born on this day in 1623. The first official baseball game was played with the New York Nines. Defeated nine players on the field. Do you call yourselves the Nines? Not a very creative name. Dressed to the Nines? No, I, you know, whatever. Baseball players, they're so clever. With the New York Nines defeating the New York Knickenbockers. 23 to 1 in Hoboken, New Jersey. In 1846, U.S. Congress prohibited slavery in the United States territories, nullifying the Dred Scott case, 1862, which is why today is Juneteenth. After surviving an 83-day filibuster in the United States Senate, the Civil Rights Act was passed by Congress, outlined all segregation on the basis of race and on this day in 1964. Edgar Winter's number one hit, Frankenstein, named because of how many cuts and patches were contained in the original studio tape, Earned a gold record in 1973 on this day. The European Union nations agreed to lift their sanctions against Cuba in the hope of encouraging democracy on the island on this day in 2008. There's a lot more fun stuff here. We're over time. It's Friday. Not going to hold Not gonna hold the class too late today, of course, since we're past the bell already. One other story, though, I just have to point out as a, as a, a nice note to leave everybody with from goodnewsnetwork.org. Surprising percentage of people feel happier after spontaneous decisions. The average American makes 6,709 spontaneous decisions every year. A brand new survey of 2,000 American respondents found when including decision, decisions such as getting coffee, trying a new lunch place, taking a nap and the like, the average American will act spontaneously about 18 times a day. Nice to, nice to recognize that. Is it the key to happiness? It might be according to the survey, which found that those who consider themselves spontaneous or a quote spontaneous person were 40% more likely to consider themselves a happy person. Not only that, but they were also 38% more likely to feel content and satisfied with their life. Interestingly, most Americans do, do consider themselves quite spontaneous as only about one in six did not think of themselves as such. But of those surveyed, 72% said they feel happier after when they make a spur of the moment decision in some way. Now, funny coming for me, I make spontaneous decisions for about two hours straight every single day to bring you this show. But I think there's something to be said, as they point out in this article, that of the people who uh, cited making significant spontaneous decisions, some of them included booking a last minute flight to Europe, suddenly switching careers, adopting a dog, moving to a brand new country, and moving on from a marriage. Over half of those surveyed, 56% said they've gone on a spontaneous trip in the past five years with most of them, 88% saying they felt happier as a result. So another little bit of good news today, add a little spontaneity to your life, be a little happier.